This is Basket Starfish, our language call. Thank you for tuning in. Um, tonight is the 77th episode. Uh, I'm not going to repeat the same thing that I speak again and again, but then I want to let you know that you know I propose this uh, model of looking at language after more than 20 years of research. I just hope that we start to look at language at a more or good organic point of view as I compare ancient Sumerian pictograph with uh, Chinese oracle bones with uh, a lot of uh, ancient Egyptian hieroglyph. We, uh, I can only show you that there are lots of similarity either in sound it represents or either in the pictographs. So there are, were actually a lot of very strange relationships since ancient time and language you know doesn't uh, mutate you know as you know uh, scientifically as a lot of this linguist uh, are telling us. So uh, from a woman's point of view I want you to start looking at it from a different angle and uh, as you can see I read uh, different subjects you know anthropology archaeology and and even into plants or even into uh, literature and poetry uh, so I draw information from every single angle to sh show myself at least you know how language you know developed as time went by how our superstition and how our beliefs actually affects how we uh, uh, talk you know so here is uh, tonight's um, slides and um, tonight I'm going to uh, bring you uh, a little bit different you know of the um uh, I, I will tell you the topic in a second. First of all, I will show you this basket starfish to let you have an idea. And I believe that we are not different tree families and um, because it us in human hierarchy. Only when you believe that, you know, human beings all started from the same core, every single culture is just one branch of the same organism. Then we can treat each other, you know, in a very equal ground. So I propose that uh, it needs to be changed. Okay, so um, tonight, you know, I will continue with the symbol of thinking and feeling, which of course is the heart and the head. The ancients seem to have struggled to, to, to prove to themselves through the writing system. And then uh, when I show you the symbols, you will begin to see that symbols really have no boundary. It helps human beings to understand things, you know, across the a, a, a big wide variety of understanding and then also uh, tonight if I can get down to the slides I prepare you will see the sexual uh, nature of writing and then it has actually uh, been hidden by the patri patriarchs you know for thousands of years and then uh, because we share you will see that we share a lot of interesting ancient ideas and uh, there's a lot of very strange mysterious serious connection between how we talk about the food and sex itself okay so tonight I will show you why because it can actually prove through all this writing early writings okay and then uh, through the slides you can also see the consistent pattern uh, in sound shifting all across different cultures okay so um, once again, you know, I will remind you of the uh, symbol of heart and the head. Both of them actually can interchange, you know. But when you look at the abstract symbol like that, it can actually give you a lot of different meanings. I have already talked about it last time. So it can, you can look at it as a silk because this is how the Chinese wrote it too, you know. And then because from silk, you can actually, uh, to express, you know, how clear a person is. So it actually also lead to the uh, understanding standing of the head you know the clearness of the head and it can also understood the space or the nest it can understand the city you can you uh, you will tell that now you can still use this uh, symbol to mark a city right so it can represent a nation or it can represent the direction the cardinal directions or, or you can actually understand the quarters because it are cut into four and you can understand it's a navel or you can understand uh, you know as the form as the human biologic sense you know uh, the navel is actually the fountain of life and then uh, also uh, you can understand it as the brain the more simple it is the more idea it can actually carry you know you can understand it as the eye 
or the breast, the tit, the nipple itself, and then the hole, and then the mouth, because of opening is the mouth, and because of the uh, mouth, you can understand it as a spring, and then uh, because of that, also you can understand the female vulva, so you will see that it, it can be understood both, you know, different parts of the female body, the breast or the vulva, okay, because it is a hole, an opening, and or a mouth, okay, and of course, you know, in a, a macho sense, you can also understand it as the sun, okay, this is just to remind you, but I try to tell you last time I didn't have time to finish and um, because of this all this uh, very related understanding the eye is the opening at uh, the mouth or the spring and also because of the breast and the vulva this is the very ancient uh, meaning that a lot of the ancient people were after because you know uh, after all uh, the, for survival they need to have fertility without fertility you know their tribe cannot survive okay so um, you will see that all this symbol uh, also actually gave up to a uh, real alphabet you know this is a Greek feather you will see uh, from uh, the next slide that uh, the feather itself is actually incorporated in all words you know with all these meanings that I show you right there here is the slide okay so from the symbol to alphabet you know uh, I gave you this example of the uh, tether itself and because the tether if you look into it you will see that it actually went through four different stages until it get to this shape right there and then it's not that you know it, people cannot agree it is that uh, the symbol itself actually incorporated all these different stages and also different meanings and then here it is i will show you how uh, theta appears in all the words that has all those meaning you saw in the last slide okay so uh, of course the heart and the head and in uh, greek you have this thumos and since ancient times since the homer time it always used to mean the heart the breast and also because of that it also used to mean the soul or the spirit and then because of the warmth of the heart and then uh, the warmth of the spirit it actually uh, goes to mean uh, something that we uh, concerning the heat of course you know this is thermos okay this is how you always believe that everything only goes to the Greek but I can tell you it is much more earlier but this slide is to show you how one alphabet can incorporate all the symbols right there okay so the theo actually means rage is also something to do with heat and then uh, it can also uh, represent the teat and then tell it to uh, the ancient Greek actually means to suck and of course you have the suck nipple for the um, milk and you can see that you know actually this uh, alphabet right there actually uh, uh, have carry this the shade you know of this symbol right there and of course it means breast itself and because thorax you can always understand it it's just for the breast part of your body and then the door itself you know the door in ancient and in, in classical hebrew i mean uh, greek it's actually a uh, theory and then uh, I'm sure if you are an Orthodox Greek, you will always hear this word. And if you read the Bible, you can always see this word. This word is used to mean the entrance to the tomb of Jesus Christ. And then why do they use this? Uh, the door itself, you know, actually it means just an opening, a hole, okay? Of course, you know, how would a tomb have a door, you know? That's why they talk about rolling the stone away. So it was just a hole. So by looking at this door, uh, you know, itself, you can actually understand it as a symbol like this and of course you know uh, when they always said that the entrance you know the Virgin Mary is definitely the door the entrance to Jesus Christ because she's the mother of Christ okay and then the location also in location the Greek use it as a suffix right there and and it's always you know uh, if I transcribe into English you will understand it means a fence you know and uh, in the English actually become you know a location in time not just in location in physically and then uh, for when you talk about something then it is from that point that you are talking about the time word it goes on okay so uh, this is very very interesting that you will see that uh, the location actually can be space and all it can also be the time itself okay and then 
I show you something to support what you see. This is a Chinese word you know, to mean the dwelling. Of course, you will see in the, the Chinese dictionary explained as a bird sitting on the nest. You will see that it's something like this because the Chinese also have this writing too. means a basket. And then the ancient Egyptian hieroglyph have that. Of course, for that you can understand it as a simple basket and all oh, this word means basket and actually this word is actually the basket that they said you know uh, Moses was put, put into so it's a basket made of you know papyrus so um, you will see that in ancient time people might understood it as this symbol right there so you will see that actually writing was very visual at that time okay so um, I, I go down it also means seat of course you know this is where the birds also sit on and of course the the ancient Egyptian hieroglyph have that you know the two goddesses you know actually sit on a seat and then in Greek these are words for seat of course one of them you will know because it's thrown thrown Thronos, okay? The thronos actually become the word throne, but in ancient time it actually just means a seat itself and, and it also means nation because in ancient Egyptian hieroglyph you can also see that when they express other people of the, the other nation, they will see a conquered bird, you know, and sitting on their own nest. So um, this is the uh, words that uh, the Greek use. Of course, you understand that too is ethnos, how uh, the what uh, ethnic came from okay so you will see that whenever you see that you can actually imagine that in ancient time people can actually read any of these four symbol until they finalize it into this symbol right there and of course window also you know have one of this symbol and the eye because through this you can see and of course you know this word of thermo and and of course you know this word we uh, relating to eye Eye, and the other one of course you know the all-seeing eye will be God you know so you have this uh, Theos and, and Theos either then means God to the Greek it also means to see okay so you will um, you will see that how incorporating an alphabet is so it actually sums up a lot of very abstract symbol to make it simple and quick but you know um, we will achieve the uh, because we write more and more but the quickness of always sacrifice some detail so now it is very difficult for you to distinguish why this one has the theta that one has the theta but in ancient time I'm sure you know if you write it's four different type it will help you to understand whether it is the nipple or whether it is the breast rather than the basket okay so this is uh, how I will try to explain to you uh, how come uh, alphabet was needed later because you know uh, things get more complicated they want a faster method to record words okay so now I'm going to uh, compare the symbol of the heart and the head of course it's always the consciousness and the desire marker okay so these two uh, always can interchange now I compare three ancient writings the first one here is Egyptian hieroglyph and then of course you can see simply is the head right the uh, Sumerian will express their heart like this and on the contrary, the Chinese will express their head like this. You will see that, you know, either the same symbol, it will shift between heart or head, okay? So the Chinese also uh, later on have this. We uh, gradually change more. Uh, this is actually have the sound of no, exactly like the Greek news. It means the brain, uh, uh, that's where your, the, the root of your neuro, your neurology, okay? This is the brain itself. And then um, this is uh, the Chinese expression of the heart and then later on you will see that it gets ambiguous it actually uh, becomes very much like the the bull head itself and then uh, you will see this uh, this is the Chinese word for thinking or ponder or consideration you will see that it is the uh, sum of the uh, head and the heart the two parts added together and then uh, I will take you back to Sumerian before Sumerian 
didn't get to their kunai form, it was pictorial form. Look at this. This is how Sumerian used to express the wisdom and the head. Look at how similar it is uh, to the Chinese head shape. And of course, later on, it become like this. But interestingly, the Sang Zhu is actually very much like the Chinese Sang for, for thought and thinking. This is Su, this is Si or Shi, okay? So uh, either they uh, meet them uh, in sound or they meet in their uh, idea of their, their symbol, okay? So, uh, of course, you know the heart and the head, you know, is the call of the action itself. That's why, you know, uh, when they started to draw their foot, you know, of course, you know, it, it is your head that moves your foot, okay? And begins the action. And this is the Sumerian expression of their foot. As I said, you know, they always have a, a thinking part added into it. And then the Chinese did the same thing. And the foot actually also have a heart part in it, if you can see that. But it can also compare to this head part as if the foot can think, you know, because the head is actually pushing your foot to do whatever they want to go okay so um, of course you know this is how the uh, ancient struggle to express their meaning of desire and then the ancient Egyptian you know used their uh, very directly use the penis you know to express this desire but the head and the, and the penis actually share the same sound okay but you look at this this is actually very similar to the Chinese writing also the uh, ancient Sumerian uh, pictograph at this stage actually means already means a man or male it actually later on means a uh, the penis. Why is it that they use the foot to mean the penis? And then um, the Greek, you know, as you can, I mean the Hebrew, as you see, is the one that always carry this very strange uh, punning. And they always, when they talk about the foot, it is always referring to the private parts, you know, uh, but the private parts of both male and female, okay? So why is this connection? So I will show, I already show you that this connection doesn't uh, happen all of a sudden in Hebrew. It already happened uh, through the expression of the writing in the Sumerian time, okay? So let's look at the vulgar languages. I kept saying again and again, the vulgar language is actually holds a lot of ancient key and but then it was abandoned by dictionary because you know the the patriarchs do not like uh, the all those uh, sexual meanings so they they try to hide a lot of things so the following slide this this slide itself I will show you that all these strange things still exist in our languages okay so if you agree you will understand this word you know gamoto Gamoti, okay? Gamoti actually means this four word F U C K word, okay, in English. So, um, so the, pay attention to the gam, okay, right there. And then uh, the Greek word gamba, gamba. Gamba actually means the shrank, is the no lower foot. Again, why is the foot sharing this uh, vulgar language right there? And then I, I will take you to see the ancient Hebrew. The ancient Hebrew actually uh, draw a, a foot, you know, but it is so stylized that no one actually think it is a, a foot. Sometimes they think it's an angle, but true. Sometimes later on, they also use it uh, to mean the ankle, you know. So the foot actually has an ankle, okay. So uh, gam actually is originally to mean a foot. Later on, it become like this. And then it be finally become later on the gemo, okay? So you will see that the sound still goes on, and you will see that the connection between the Hebrew and the Greek is right there. Somehow, you know, the uh, everyone says that you know the Greek pick up the writing from Phoenician, but I keep saying that no, everyone is sharing all these things. Everyone pick up from their neighbors, you know. So nothing is absolute, okay? So. Let's go back to the Sumerian. The Sumerian again have this to mean the penis and its sound is gesh. Okay, you see the g g okay right there and then it means penis and then the Chinese have exactly the same thing. Here the Chinese sound for the uh, food is g or ka 
and um, you will see that they are all in the same system because Chinese do not have an alphabetic system we are free to roam around shifting around with our sound even now if you go to different provinces in China and you will find more than 30 different pronunciation of the same word okay so this is just Cantonese sound right there and this is a uh, Fujianese uh, another very ancient dialect from the east coast of China uh, this is Ka sound and look at the ancient Egyptian uh, ancient hieroglyph and both of this has the Ka sound right there either it means the head it also means the penis right there so you will see that somehow um, there is a very subtle thing hidden underneath and then the Sanskrit gum don't say that you know uh, they are a different system look at that the Sanskrit gum either actually it's the root for the go and walk uh, word of course it related to the food I otherwise it will mean the sexual intercourse again it is the same sound uh, very strange the food is always related to something sexual okay so and um, of course you know when I told you uh, to compare the base you know I already compared all this girl alphabet also happened in Sumerian in Chinese in in, in 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 also in Sanskrit and in other in Tibetan as well you will see that this is the base also related to the food okay if you pay more attention you will see the foot right there okay so uh, also the Arabic if I read the Arabic word like an Egyptian with a dialectic sound it will pronounce as gamma what is gamma again it's sexual intercourse but of course now if you pronounce it in classical Arabic it will be jama you know so but then you will see that this gum 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 is all existed in all these uh, languages or the the shorter form of ke, 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 okay so um, this G, G and the J soft and hard G actually shifted you know uh, between uh, ancient uh, uh, between Chinese uh, Mandarin and Ch Cantonese uh, Man uh, Cantonese and Mandarin in, in within Chinese it also shift between Arabic itself it also shift between Hebrew and Arabic so this is a very interesting very consistent sound shifting okay so once again I show you something very interesting compare this to this okay this is the Chinese I don't have a word to show you but I show you a very ambiguous sign and when we uh, swear and um, I, I never swear myself in, in Chinese but it is the word sound okay when you say gao it actually means the penis itself and then there is a word we actually say gao gao actually for us it means long but in time okay so you what does this long actually originally mean you you can figure it out yourself okay so but then you go on and you will see there's a proper Chinese word we will say gao Gao actually does mean intercourse itself and but when you look up the dictionary uh, uh, the Gao actually uh, very strangely telling me that it means that intertwined strength okay so what's this shen going to do but don't you remember that the check part of the shen is actually the calf have you ever wonder why part of your foot will be will call calf so look at all this this is the bull head right there and that's a very very ancient embedded sign right inside your foot okay so and then uh, also another word of saying uh, the illicit uh, sexual intercourse would be cow okay so this cow or cow in Cantonese Chinese is a very very rude vulgar language which will never get into the dictionary but in street words it actually con maintains the very very ancient sound okay so you will see that the calf itself somehow it's actually inside this food so this desire is actually written inside the, 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 the food and if I uh, take you to an Egyptian uh, dialectic word 
Ghost actually means marriage. What do people do in marriage but have sexual intercourse? Okay, so um, I show you this because I want to show you how sexual is uh, uh, things uh, which seem to be very normal in ancient time is actually embedded very, very uh, hidden inside uh, modern languages. Okay, so I will show you also the symbol of strength which is your car. Did you uh, pay? If you pay attention to all the ancient car carving, you will see that after they cover up themselves, you don't see the penis anymore. But they will always show you, you know, if they are hero, if they are strong man, if they are god, they always put out one leg to show you they have a very very strong calf. Somehow, you know, what's the ancient connection? Um, uh, uh, precisely was we never know but we did know that you know somehow they do put this bull right there if you look at this you can also express it as a car or a calf okay and that it means man the male the penis this is the, definitely how the patri uh, patriarchs how they embedded all those power into themselves okay and of course you know in the ancient Egyptian world they will put all this you know to represent that car so uh, either the car or the girl which is just a shift shifting sound you know they are always used in ancient time you know to mean the strength okay so I will show you again you know also this um, quickly uh, but this is a very uh, good uh, slide it actually means marriages of course Greek gamos you means marriage Chinese skin means marriage and then you go back to the foot of course you always have a pair of foot you know to mean uh, marriage right so somehow you know in different cultures the foot and the shoes always is a marriage symbol and okay I was going to show you the very complicated relationship between the the food, the two food, and then the marriage itself, and but then uh, it is too much of a hurry. Uh, next time I will carry on, but I hope you understand this very ancient, subtle, uh, embedded, you know, sexual intonation of the food and the marriage. And until now, you know, you always look at a pair of shoes. If you read the Bible, you will always see that you know when the uh, page works uh, redeem, you know, the widow. There, there's always a ritual with the shoes itself you can go and look up the bible itself um, anyway i will stop here and hopefully you can understand it by rewatching.